The du'as that are mentioned in the Qur'an upon the tongues of the Prophets are the greatest of du'as. And in today's first half of our khutbah, I will mention two du'as that I believe every single one of us should not just memorize but use frequently. The first of them is the du'a of the Prophet Ibrahim and the second is the du'a of the Prophet Yunus salam. And both of these du'as were said at times of great difficulty, at times of distress, when it appeared that there was no hope left, what dua did the Prophet say when all hope of this world was cut off? And Ibn Abbas narrated that when the Prophet Ibrahim was about to be thrown into that fire, what fire is this? This is the fire of Nimrud. This is the fire that for three days and three nights, it was made hotter and hotter. The fire that they wanted to punish Ibrahim with when they accused him of destroying their idols. And instead of responding back, he mocked them and said, no, no, must be the, the, the other idols who killed the biggest one. They must have been jealous of him. So this young boy, Ibrahim, probably 14, 15 years old, this young boy, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and we learn from the traditions, he was the only Muslim on earth at the time. There was no other Muslim other than him at that time. And he believes in Allah and he rejects the idols. So when these evil people, when these mighty kings surround him and they tell him, unless you apologize and come back to our way, we will kill you in this manner. And they torture him for three days and then they make this fire and before they throw him in, what does he say? Ibn Abbas said, when Ibrahim was about to be thrown into the fire, he said, So what is this dua? And what does it mean? And why is this dua so powerful? And why was it so effective in the lives of these prophets? The phrase hasbi Allah means Allah is sufficient for me. I don't need anybody else. Hasbi Allah. I only need Allah. Wa ni'mal wakil. And what a perfect wakil here means, not just protector, but someone whom I delegate my affairs to. Someone who will take charge of what I need to be done. You can only say hasbi Allah when you know who is Allah. And then you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A heart that doesn't have iman, a heart that is ignorant of Allah, cannot say hasbi Allah. When you say Hasbi Allah, you are affirming the power of Allah, the love of Allah, the fact that Allah knows who you are, what you're doing, how much you need Him. When you say Hasbi Allah, you are saying, Oh Allah, I recognize that when you decide to do something, nobody can come between you and your will. There is no strength, there is no power other than you. When you say Hasbi Allah, you say, I don't care who is against me. If Allah is on my side, that's all that I need. Imagine the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Imagine, surrounded by a city, an army, the mightiest king alive is in front of him, threatening him, torturing him. He's a 15 year old kid. His own father is on the side of the prosecution. Just imagine, not a single soul in the world to help him. Yet what does he know? Allah will protect me. Hasbi Allah. Oh Allah, you are in charge of taking care of these mighty armies. Oh Allah, I turn to you. You will deal with this fire. You will take charge of this whole world that has gathered against me. So what happens when Ibrahim is thrown into that fire? The fire itself becomes a garden for him. A garden, a pleasant walk in the park. It becomes beautiful, fragrant, green, cool. This is what happens when you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us in the Quran, Whoever truly trusts in Allah, Allah will take care of him. Allah says in the Quran, Whoever truly trusts in Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will make an escape route for him, will make a passage of exit for him, and Allah will provide for him in a manner that he did not expect. Meaning, if you truly put your trust in Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of your calamity, will deal with your distress, will take charge of defeating your enemies in ways you don't expect. This is the dua that we say when we are faced with major calamity, major stress. When Ni'mal Wakil means, and what a beautiful, what a perfect, what a majestic wakil. What is a wakil? A wakil is somebody, in, in Arabic you call sometimes a lawyer is a wakil. 
Why? Because when you hire a wakil, what do you do? You sit down and you let the wakil do the business for you. But Allah Azza wa Jal isn't just a wakil, He is Al Wakil. Al Wakil means you trust Him for everything, you delegate everything to Him that Allah will take care of this. He is the Al Wakil. I can't do it, O oh Allah. I need you. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. I put you in charge, O oh Allah, and you are enough for the job. You are enough to take care of me because you are my Rabb. So this is the first dua. Let us memorize it. Let us use it. And the second dua, which is also used at times of distress, at times of difficulty. I wanted both these duas to be because we go through all types of difficulties. Every one of us, life is nothing but difficulties and one tragedy after another. This is the reality of life. So the second dua as well is a beautiful dua. And it is the dua of the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, No Muslim ever says this dua except that Allah will answer him. This dua is a beautiful dua. As we all know, the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, he uh, left his city without getting permission from Allah to leave. And this was a sin for the prophets. The prophets cannot leave the city until Allah tells them. The Prophet Yunus gave up. He said, my people are bad. They're not accepting. Khalas, let me just go. And so what happened as we know that he went onto the ship and the people of the ship, they said somebody has bad luck here or somebody is bringing this punishment. Who must it be? They drew lots and it came to Yunus and there was a thunderstorm going. It was the middle of the night. They said, you're the one causing this omen. Nonetheless, they said, you're the cause of this bad luck we need to get rid of you and so in the middle of a dark and stormy night in the middle of the ocean when the thunder is going and the rain is pouring complete darkness they pick Yunus alayhi salam and they fling him over the ocean just think about that if any of you have ever been in the middle of the seas how terrifying it is even on a beautiful day if you fall into that ocean imagine in the middle of the night when the waves are coming and the thunder and the, and the rain and they throw him into the middle of that darkness and he plunges and plunges and plunges and as you all know then Allah Azza wa causes a fish, a whale to swallow him and the whale takes him deep, deep, deep down the depths of the sea. Imagine not able to breathe completely blind in the depths of the ocean and Allah Azza wa says, what did he do? He realized he made a mistake. So what? Allah says, وَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He called out in the depths of the darkness. Wallahi, how much darkness was there. The darkness of the night. The darkness of the depths of the ocean. The darkness of the inner chambers of the whale. Darkness over darkness would have died of fear. But Yunus alayhi salam, he realized, I need Allah azza wa jal. And so what did he do? وَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ from the depths of the ocean, he calls out, La ilaha illa ant subhanak. Oh Allah, there is nobody worthy of being praised, worthy of being worshipped, worthy of being glorified other than you. Meaning what? Some people who don't have strong faith, they blame Allah for their calamities and tragedies. I'm a good person. Why is God doing this to me? So, Subhanaka here implies, O oh Allah, you are not worthy of any criticism. You're only worthy of worship. Inni kuntu min al I was the one who made a mistake. I was the one who fell into a sin. And this is the perfection of repentance. So when you affirm Allah's perfection and your own imperfection, you are being humble. And humility is the essence of worship. So when we say, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inni kuntu min al we are affirming Allah is perfect. And we are acknowledging, I am imperfect. And when we do this, Allah shows His perfection to us. The opposite of this is Iblis, who is too arrogant to recognize. And he says, I am better. I am the one who deserves this. What happened with Yunus alayhi salam? From the depths of the darkness, the whale comes all the way to the top at the crack of dawn, at the break of dawn, the sun is shining now, and the whale goes all the way to the shore and spits him out onto the uh, shore. And so Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, uh, الغم, We were the ones who saved him from his distress. And then, Listen to this phrase and memorize it, brothers and sisters. It is one of the most optimistic phrases in the Quran. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And in this manner, 
When the mu'min says, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kutubin al-zalimeen, in this manner we shall save all of those who are in distress.